the food choices you make each day don't just impact your own health. They affect the environment, animals, and other people. Let's take a closer look at how a plant-based diet can make the world a better place. Did you know that raising animals for food can be extremely harmful to the environment? It takes far more natural resources to produce animal products than it does to produce plant food. Why is this? If I just sit in bed all day, I'll still burn about 1,500 calories. This is called my resting metabolic rate, and it's the amount of energy used just to keep me alive. Animals have resting metabolic rates too. Most of the calories fed to meat animals are just used to keep those animals alive. In fact, it takes 20 calories going into an animal just to get one calorie of flesh back out. This is a very inefficient system because it takes massive amounts of land, water, and other resources to feed the animal that then becomes our food. The majority of the agricultural land in the United States is used to grow crops that feed animals. It takes 20 times the amount of fossil fuels 14 times the amount of water, and 25 times as much land to produce one meat calorie as it does to produce one plant calorie. Dairy products are also very inefficient. In 2006, a group of United Nations scientists released a report called Livestock's Long Shadow, which examined the environmental impact of meat production. The report stated that eating meat is one of the most significant contributors to the most serious environmental problems at every scale, from local to global. The meat industry contributes to problems of land degradation, climate change and air pollution, water shortage and water pollution, and loss of biodiversity. Meat consumption is the number one cause of global warming. It contributes to global warming 40% more than all forms of transportation combined. The factory farming industry places an enormous strain on natural resources. The huge amount of animal waste created by confining so many animals in such a small place pollutes the water, air, and land. If you're concerned about the environment, the best way to reduce your footprint is to eat plant-based. So why aren't environmental organizations shouting this from their rooftops? They urge us to use less water, recycle compost, and drive more fuel-efficient cars. Sometimes they mention eating local, but seldom do they ever utter a word about reducing meat consumption. Yet a 2008 award-winning study found that eating 100% plant-based just one day a week reduces greenhouse gas emissions more than eating 100% local seven days a week. Unfortunately, sometimes politics get in the way of proper environmental education. But the environmental impact of meat and dairy consumption is no small matter. According to Dr. Pachuri, the chair of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a major shift towards plant-based diets is imperative if we are to have even a chance of preventing catastrophe. So what about animals? Every year in North America, we slaughter about 11 billion land animals for food. When we go to the grocery store, we often see meat and dairy products with pictures of happy animals on the packaging, creating the illusion that cows, pigs, and chickens are raised on the old McDonald-type family farms that we grew up singing about. Unfortunately, this isn't the farm of the 21st century. These traditional establishments have been replaced 
by factory farms, otherwise known as concentrated animal feeding operations. Over 90% of our nation's food animals are raised under these conditions. Factory farms are much more concerned with their bottom line than they are with animal welfare. They have essentially transformed animals into production units with the goal of generating the greatest amount of meat for the least amount of money. The most efficient way to accomplish this task is to raise animals in confined spaces. Chickens raised for meat are selectively bred and fed to grow much larger and faster than is natural. Because of the popularity of white breast meat, these birds are selectively bred so their upper bodies grow six times faster than would be normal. Their internal organs can't possibly keep up with this growth, so many die from lung or heart failure. Because their legs can't support the weight of their bodies, many become crippled and die of starvation or dehydration. But chickens used for eggs may suffer even more. 95% of these birds spend their entire lives crammed into tiny cages, unable to spread their wings. At a young age, their beaks are seared off with a hot blade in order to prevent them from pecking one another to death. The beak is full of nerves and de-beaking is extremely painful. Many of the hens suffer broken legs as a result of being confined in such close quarters. It takes 34 hours in this miserable cage for a hen to produce just one egg. Sometimes hens are starved for up to two weeks in order to shock their bodies to produce more eggs than is natural. Cows bred for meat are separated from their mothers soon after birth and are painfully castrated, branded, and dehorned. They soon move from pastures to feedlots to be fattened up on a very unnatural diet. They then endure long and stressful trips to slaughterhouses, which are often very far away. During these trips, they may go without food and water for days. Cows used for dairy also experience immense suffering. In order to produce milk, they have to be artificially inseminated and impregnated over and over again. They commonly endure extremely traumatic separation from their calves within a day of birth. These cows are forced to produce about six times as much milk as their babies would naturally suckle. This is extremely damaging to their health. One fourth of all dairy cows at any given time have mastitis, a very painful swelling of the glands in their udders. The excess milk production also leaches calcium from the cow's bones, causing osteoporosis and fractures. This explains why 40% of dairy cows become lame by the time they're shipped to slaughter. There's not enough time to describe the suffering of every animal, but pigs, turkeys, sheep, and other animals used for meat often live miserable lives and die painful deaths. Line speeds at slaughterhouses have increased exponentially over the years, increasing trauma and injury to animals and to workers. In some cases, animals are disassembled while fully conscious. But in addition to harming the environment and animals, meat production also harms people. Close to one billion people worldwide don't have enough food to eat. This number is expected to grow much larger in coming years. According to the United Nations, Global food production needs to increase 75% by the year 2050 in order to keep up with the world's surging population. By this time, an estimated 9.3 billion people will inhabit this planet. If all of these people consume the diet of the average American today, 
experts estimate that we would need four planet Earths to sustain the population. For example, many people in Mexico are chronically undernourished, but much of the grain produced in that country goes to feed livestock for meat. In Brazil, much of the cultivated land is used to grow soybeans that are exported to feed livestock. Huge amounts of the Amazon rainforest have been destroyed to raise livestock and produce soybeans to feed them. As a result, many local farmers and communities have been pushed off the land. Prices for black beans and other staples of the traditional Brazilian diet have skyrocketed. It's true that world hunger is multifaceted and is also affected by social and political factors. But there's no doubt that plant-based eating is part of the solution for change. The average American gets 27% of their calories from animal products. If everyone on Earth started eating this way, more than half of the world's population would starve. Paul McCartney, a longtime vegetarian, uses his influence to promote plant-based eating. Let's listen to what he says about the potential that plant-based eating has to change the world. It's staggering when you think about it. Vegetarianism takes care of so many things in one shot. Ecology, famine, and cruelty. The world is a big place and sometimes it feels like we're too small to make a difference. But change happens one person at a time, one meal at a time, and one bite at a time. As you strive to improve your health through a plant-based diet, you can celebrate the fact that the benefits extend far beyond yourself to other people to animals, and to the entire planet. You will quite simply be making this world a better place.